what's up guys, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and today I'll be going through the installation and basic usage of Vocoder R2 or just Vocoder as you may know it. Some, you probably don't know exactly what that is, but maybe you do if you went ahead and searched for this video. However, if you don't, it is an incredibly fast and powerful renderer for Adobe Premiere Pro. When using the built-in one, it doesn't seem to use your graphics card a hell of a lot for rendering H.264 or X.264 because it uses mostly only your CPU and GPU for only hardware accelerated effects and ones that use your GPU. But using Vocoder, I reach basically real-time rendering at 2K footage with a 1080 Ti graphics card, and it should be somewhere similar to you if you're in the 10 series, and if you're in the 20 series of NVIDIA graphics cards, I'm not exactly sure what performance you'll be getting, but it will be a hell of a lot faster than the one that's built into Adobe Premiere Pro. So enough with the explanation, how exactly do you go ahead and install Vocoder and start using it? Well, it's a little bit confusing because it's an open source project, but the main developer, Daniel, has done quite a good job of making it really easy to use. So linked down below is vocoder.org if you'd like to click it instead of typing it, v-o-u-k-o-d-e-r.org. When you're on this page, you'll simply head across to the download and you'll hover over it, and then you'll click a vocoder 2.2 Adobe. Next up, you'll be taken to the releases page on GitHub, where you can go back and look at the main repository if you're interested in how this is coded. But if you're like me or any other user, you'll just be interested in the releases page. Look for the one with the latest release tag, which should be at the top. Currently, it is 2.2. What I'll be doing is scrolling down and we'll download the installer. The After Effects and Premiere zips only contain the plugin and the vocoder core is something that I'm not entirely sure of yet, but I'm pretty sure that's the actual renderer while well, these are just the plugins. Anyways, we'll be downloading the installer. Once it finishes, you can go ahead and run it, so you can left click on the installer to open it as soon as it's done. Once it's started up, you can pick a language, I'll use English and I'll hit OK. Next, we'll be accepting the license agreement. Next, make sure both of these are checked if you have both Premiere slash Media Encoder and or After Effects installed. Next, make sure these are in the right locations. As you can see, they point towards Program Files Adobe Common Plugins 7.0 Media Core. If you've installed it to a different drive and it's not detecting, make sure to point it towards the correct Media Core folder, such as this. Next, install. The plugin will then install, and you can simply hit Finish. So let's go ahead and open up Premiere Pro. Of course, because we've installed a renderer, there's nothing immediately different. So we'll go ahead and open up a blank project just to demonstrate exactly what this does. So of course, to demonstrate how it works, I'll be adding in a MP4 file and making a new sequence from it. I'll just allow it to import completely. And then I'll go ahead and click on the timeline to make sure I'm in the right window and hit Control M to open up the render export settings window. So yours will look something like this. You may be a bit confused with what is different, but next to Format at the very top, click the drop down, and looking towards the very bottom, you'll see Vocoder R2, which is the current release. It is the second version. The previous version just had Vocoder without R2 next to it, and I would assume that future releases may look a little bit different, but the process should be mostly the same. So I've already got a preset, which is my 1440p NVENC Use Me preset, just so that I know which one to use. And of course, you'll have to go ahead and set up one of these yourselves. So I've got my width and height to 2560 by 1440 for 2K footage, square pixels and 60 FPS. Color range I've got as limited and color space as BT709 HD. And these settings seem to work really well for my recording settings and work well for YouTube. If I head across to the audio tab, you'll see that you can pick a sample rate. But as you can see, there's not a hell of a lot here, and you'll probably notice that there's a new vocoder tab. This is what we'll really be interested over here. You'll see a string of text over here, but what we'll be doing is we'll be hitting the configure button. You'll see a window like this, which you've probably never seen before in Premiere Pro, but this is actually really, really useful. Under Video Encoder, we'll be choosing H.264 NVIDIA NVENC. Of course, if you're using AMD, you may want to pick their equivalent to this, or you may want to choose something different here, such as ProRes, VP9, HAP, etc, etc. But I'll be using NVIDIA NVENC H.264 so that I can render using my graphics card and upload to YouTube that way. Audio encoder, I recommend leaving as AAC. However, you do have a ton of options. I just prefer AAC FFmpeg because it seems to work well enough. Configure, 
and you can set the audio bitrate as well as the profile. I'll leave it at main and 512 kilobits per second because YouTube can do all the compression. I want it to sound the best that it can coming out of Premiere Pro. Hitting OK, let's go into the video encoder configure button over here. So inside of here, it gets a little bit more complicated and you'll need to go ahead and Google for each one of these options over here so that you fully understand what they do. But for me, I'm using my 1080 Ti as a rendered GPU, even though I have a 1080 inside of it as well. Preset, I've got as fast, profile high, strategy constant quantizer. You can of course choose constant bitrate or variable bitrate constant quantizer, make sure that there is a constant quality of 15, which is what I've selected. The higher the number, the worse that the video looks, and the lower the number, the better the video looks, but the more time it takes to process, as well as the file size will be bigger. But 15 seems to be really good for 2K for me, at least uploading to YouTube. This video that you're watching right now will be rendered out using these exact settings, as well as any gaming video on my main channel, Technobo, which I'll link somewhere down below, just so you can get an example of what it looks like over there. Of course, I'm using the exact same settings for this video and those ones, regardless of the action content in the video, such as things moving around a hell of a lot or things being static in these tutorial videos, because the constant quantizer is based off of quality rather than bitrate. Scrolling down, we've got RC look ahead, B frames, which I've got to 16 and 3 respectively, and I've got everything else is set to the default down at the bottom. Side data, I leave empty, as well as filters. We'll hit OK, and you can go across to the Container tab if you'd like to change it from MP4 to QuickTime MOV or Matroska MKV, but MP4 is probably the best for YouTube. I leave Fast Start off, but some people recommend to have it on for YouTube uploads. Doesn't really matter. Settings. We have the languages English, which is the localization for the settings window over here. There's not a hell of a lot of languages, but I'm sure if you know a language, you're more than welcome to go ahead and help on the forums or on the GitHub page. Log will tell you information about your PC and the vocoder plugin. I'm pretty sure this will change as you're rendering, but if it doesn't, hey, it's still here anyways for diagnosing problems before you start rendering. About just tells you information about the creator and top patrons, even though this seems to be empty right now. Anyways, I'll hit OK, and I'll set it to a more reasonable amount of time to render. So we'll go ahead and render out, say, 30 seconds of video. So it'll be about there, 30 seconds of video. And I'll go ahead and just hit Export. I have used Previews on as well. And you can see that rendering 30 seconds of video is taking about 30 seconds of render time. So yes, we are rendering a real-time 2K video. If you try and do this with something like Premiere Pro, it's going to take a hell of a lot longer to do. Now, of course, if you're interested, down below will be a link to a video where I go ahead and compare Vocoder, Daniel 2, and the built-in Premiere Pro renderer. But of course, that'll only be available when I get around to it. Currently, I don't have time for that, but this video will be a good jumping off point if you'd like to experiment for your Yourself. If you'd like to know more about other renderers such as Daniel 2, also check the description down below for related videos to this one. Anyways, opening up the folder where I rendered this to, and opening up the file, you can see it's around 190 megabytes for 30 seconds of 2K footage, which is actually pretty good. You can see that the quality is basically perfect and indistinguishable from the source content, but of course you're free to tweak the settings to match however your content is created, etc, etc. Anyways, that's about it. I'm not going to go into too much detail with the plugin. I just shared my settings which I used for this video and my other videos, and how to install the plugin. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you're interested in more rendering techniques and plugins, etc, etc for Premiere Pro, make sure to check the description down below for related videos. My name has been Technobo here for Troubleshoots, and I'll see you guys next time. Ciao!